Hey there everybody, it's Rev Kev here. Hope you're having an amazing day today. Just thought I would do a two-part video series on my top 11 list of Star Wars movies. I've actually had a couple of people reach out to me and thought it would be a good idea that I would do this. Um, and I agree, I thought it would be a great idea. But I wanna do my top 11 list of Star Wars movies a little bit differently. I want to do it, one, I'm going to do it in two parts, so the video is not that long. But secondly, I want to do this in the watchability of the movies today. You see, I understand a lot of the tension of Star Wars today is the nostalgia. Right? I've been a Star Wars fan back when I played with these original toys here in 1977. Um, I've been invested in Star Wars for a long time, so there is a strong nostalgia nostalgia focus and so it's easy in my mind to have the movies all categorized but as I've been re-watching them lately um, it's kind of has changed my order so I'm really looking at this top 11 list um, through the watchability of Star Wars today how does it you know enjoyment and all of that kind of thing character development the script you know all those things that make a really good movie that's the way i'm going to address it so so further ado i got my trusty little notebook here and so what i'm going to start with is we're going i'm going to start with the bottom half i'm going to start with my mm, i'm going to start at number six i'm going to go six to eleven my bottom star wars movies starting from number six all the way to my least favorite star wars movie so you ready here we go. So coming in at number six for me is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. That's right, Phantom Menace is not as down on the list as probably where it used to be when it comes to watching Star Wars today. Phantom, Move, Phantom Menace is a fun movie. Very interesting characters, Darth Maul, the lightsaber battles, Qui-Gon Jinn, the pod racing, it's quite enjoyable. It, it has a few slow moments, but all the Star Wars movies do. So for me, Phantom Menace, because of its just nature, and for me, the Phantom Menace has actually aged well. <laughs> I've explained in another video before the difference between disliking and being disappointed, whereas I was disappointed with the prequel trilogy, but the watchability of those movies is still pretty decent. So number six, Phantom Menace. Coming in at number seven, seven, is Solo, a Star Wars movie. I wasn't one of the boycott people um, because it's Star Wars. And for me, Star Wars is like pizza. Even if it's bad, it's still pizza. <laughs> so opening night, went with my kids to go see Solo and was pleasantly surprised. It was a fun movie. It was enjoyable. I thought... You know, the actor playing Han Solo did a decent job of making it his own. Chewbacca stole the movie. He's great. He should have had even more screen time. Some of the characters were pretty interesting. Uh, you know, Kira, Lando, Dan, you know, Danny Glover, uh, Donald Glover, Donald Glover, amazing as Lando Calrissian. And makes for a really fun, you know, fun time at the movies. So for me, Solo comes in at number seven. Next up, number eight is the Clone Wars animated movie. Now I know some people debate whether or not this is, should be categorized as a Star Wars movie, but for me it is because it was the very first movie that I brought my son to see in the movie theater. Sorry, not first movie, first Star Wars movie my son Cameron saw in the movie theater with me. And uh, again, great character, good storyline, slower than the other movies uh, because I don't think it was made for the screen, even though it was, it still had the TV show feel to it. So it had a lot of lull moments, uh, but great characters. Captain Rex, introduce, the introduction of Ahsoka Tano, for one, was just amazing. So, number eight, Clone Wars. Okay, we're starting to get into the bottom here. So you might be surprised. Might be surprised, but you're probably not going to be surprised. Next up, number nine for me, is Attack of the Clones, episode two. When it just comes to rewatchability of this movie, um, it's a bit of a snooze fest. There's just not a lot going on. You know, the whole chasing down uh, the bounty hunters, the investigation of the clone, 
uh, you know, sorry, the investigation of Django Fett and the assassination attempt on Amidala's life um, just didn't warrant a, an entire movie. It wasn't interesting enough. It didn't hold, doesn't hold my attention today. Uh, I tried to watch it several times. And now I'm a romantic comedy guy. I'm a big suck for romantic comedies. Um, but the romance in this just fell, falls flat. There is no reason why Ad, uh, Padme Amidala would ever fall in love with Anakin Skywalker. Totally makes sense why he would fall in love with her. Makes no sense why she would fall in love with him based on what we see on screen. So it's just pretty darn low. Uh, but boy, does it pick up at the end on Geonosis with the... Uh, with the beginning of the Clone Wars and Yoda showing up and battling Count Dooku. I like that, but man, that first hour and a half could all be scrapped and just give us a half hour episode, put that in the Clone Wars series. So number nine, Star Wars episode two, Attack of the Clones. Kind of finishing up the bottom of the list here. Number 10 is Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Now I know Rogue One gets a lot of great press from people as being the best movie in the Disney Star Wars era, I would wholeheartedly disagree with it. Watch it again, not through your nostalgia lens, but watch it again as a movie. It makes too many assumptions. It assumes too much that you know who everybody is and everything that is going on. It assumes a deep knowledge of the original trilogy, especially a, a deep knowledge of A New Hope. If you don't know anything about A New Hope, if you don't know anything about Star Wars, you can't use this movie to jump into it. The characters, boring. None of them interesting for me. Uh, the plot line, slow. It is slow. When you watch it again, it's painfully slow. Just nothing going on. The tension that they're trying to build up with that Jin and, and her father and that abandonment issue just falls flat. Uh, the most interesting thing of the entire movie is K2SO and the three-minute Darth Vader scene at the end. Um, and again, for me, Rogue One when it comes to rewatchability, actually does just as much damage to the character of Luke Skywalker as my last movie in my list. And I'll explain that in a moment. So let's get into number 11, my least favorite Star Wars movie when it comes to today and watching them today is Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. I don't even know where to begin. I have tried to like this movie. I have tried to become a Star Wars guy. I love Star Wars, even bad Star Wars. I love it. But this one just... I even talk to people who love it and I say, why do you love it? And they say, I love it because I didn't expect it. And I'm like, okay, but what did you love about it? Well, I loved it because I didn't expect them to go in that direction. But did you love the direction? No, but I loved the surprise. Well, see, you can love a surprise. You can, someone could throw you a surprise birthday party and you are so happy and you love the fact that they threw you a surprise birthday party, but the party sucked <laughs> and you didn't have a good time at the party. For me, that's what The Last Jedi is. It just fell flat every area. They messed up Finn, they messed up Rey, they messed up Kylo Ren, the whole Canto Bite scene is a waste of time. Um, and they just killed the character of Luke Skywalker, who ultimately, that's what Star Wars is about. It's about the Skywalkers. And just like Rogue One, Rogue One took away from the mythology of Luke Skywalker by making it a man-made weakness that anyone could do this. It's like, no, in the original one, the rebel spies, they got the plans, not because they knew there was a weakness, because that's just what you do in the military. The enemy's got a new weapon. You better get the plans to try to discover a weakness. And through their intelligence, they discovered one. Not that there was one built into it intentionally, right? So they discover one, but they go, holy smokes, this thing is too huge. We can't do this. Only a Jedi Knight could do this. But there aren't any more Jedi. So they needed Luke Skywalker, this new hope, this new Jedi to come, right? To come in and destroy the Death Star. So I think Rogue One did just as much damage to the character of Luke Skywalker as The Last Jedi did, even though Luke's not even in that movie. So that is my bottom rung. These are my kind of descending order of preference of Star Wars movies, taking out the nostalgia of growing up as a kid. And um, yeah, so hopefully would love to get your comments. Agree, disagree with this order. Look forward, uh, look for part two of this video series coming up next week. And I'm going to give you my top 
five Star Wars movies. I'd love to know what you think in the comment section below, and as always, and as always, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and be a part of our hashtag Keeping Star Wars Fun community. Until next time, look forward to um, coming back to you, and take care, and may the Force be with you.